You put two men our size behind a bar the size of Graham and Grain for two years. There's lucky there wasn't a homicide. <laughs> My name is Trevor Fry. I am the proprietor of Washline LLC of the forthcoming Marble Alley here in Washington, D.C. My name is Lucas B. Smith. I'm a bartender and I work at Compass Rose. The Old Fashioned is not the name of a cocktail. It's a description of a style of making a cocktail. And any derivation from that recipe, as far as I'm concerned, turns it into something else that only masquerades as an Old Fashioned and I want to unmask that fool. <laughs> Order! Order. Order. Um, I worked at one of the largest whiskey bars in the world. I worked in the saloon and I made, on average as a bar team, almost 7,000 old fashions a year. We have to evolve, we have to progress with the people and with the times. And, you know, drops of beard oil that go into your old fashioned on accident. <laughs> don't necessarily not make it an old-fashioned, but it's definitely a variation of an old-fashioned. The bottom line for me is that there are certain lines that should be drawn in the sand. The old-fashioned is the original cocktail. Again, the old-fashioned is not um, a name for a thing, it's a description of a thing, of a way of preparing a thing. And it doesn't involve any Earl Grey, it doesn't involve any honey, it doesn't involve any cherries, it doesn't involve any orange slices. <laughs> I'm uh, Michael Vincent Barton. I'm a bartender at Jack Rose Dining Saloon and uh, Dram and Grain, our cocktail bar concept. And the argument is on the use of jiggers versus free pouring your spirits. The side of which I'm going to take is uh, using jiggers accurately down to the to the quarter of an ounce, you know, eighth of an ounce. These measurements matter in the context of a drink that is often. You know, not more than four ounces. My name's Jacob Simpson. I am the head bartender at Chaplin's and Shaw. I think jigger pouring has a big following in this city, but I, uh, I really want to sort of be a proponent of free pouring, and I, I really think that it adds a lot to the creation of the culture. We have different varieties of speed pours, manufacturers. You can lose a little bit there. You have different counts, different bottles take differently. That stuff all matters. It all comes, it all comes back to haunt you once you get that drink to the guest. Looking at the jigger, jigger and cocktails out, right? And you're not looking up. And that's fine because it makes sense that you're consistently making a drink. But it's about more than just a drink when you walk into a bar. It's about the immediate eye contact that you as a bartender make. If you're off by a fraction of an ounce, the guest is gonna taste it. If somebody doesn't have me a menu within five seconds of me hitting the bar, if there's not cocktail menus in front of me, and there's not water in front of me, I can do that with my other hand while I'm making a drink. Let's hear it for Mikey. Woo! Nice and loud. I'm Jess Weinstein. I work at Hank's Oyster Bar in DuPont Circle, and I'm the bar manager there. My name is Christine Kim. Um, I currently work for Schlau Restaurant Group. Um, running all the bars in D.C. We are going to argue about the worst mistakes you can make behind the bar, specifically in putting things back where you found them, letting muscle memory do work for you, spending more time with your guests and taking care of your fellow bartenders. You know what sucks? When bartenders don't reset their station. Dirty Is tin. In its place? Dirty tin. Christine. You don't reset. You don't reset. <laughs> Bottom line, Christine, mise en place, okay? It's about, is everything in its place? Are we ready for service? Water is awesome, absolutely. If the cup is empty, fill it. But all those things go back to mise en place. Is everything in its place? Time to just come out and say I love you.